All right, this is how to make a natural uh, yeast. All you really need is any kind of flour. It can be all-purpose flour, it can be bread flour, it can be whole grain flour, it can really be anything. You're gonna need some, some kind of flour. You're gonna need water, a two-quart mason jar, a cloth, and a rubber band. The very first step, obviously, is have that stuff together. But I've got a measuring cup on top of a kitchen scale, and we need to weigh out four ounces of flour and also four ounces of water. So I've turned it on, it's going to zero to the weight of the measuring cup. It says zero. So now I'm gonna add four ounces of flour. It can be any kind of flour. You can mix it even. It's 3.9, four. All right, four ounces of flour. Add it to our jar. Now I'm going to add four ounces of water. Four ounces of water. So now I'm going to add it to this. The way that I normally do this is so what you do is you mix it, your four ounces of flour, your four ounces of water. I usually just put a canning lid and band on and just shake the crap out of it until you can kind of tell when it's shaking up. Once you feel that it's kind of like stop moving on the inside, then what you need to do is open it up Look inside, it'll be like pretty thick. So now you want to take a small spatula, something like this will work. You want to scrape this down on the sides, run it through there, make sure that it you know looks like it's mixed up, no dry spots. Scrape the sides really good. Try to get it scraped down to the bottom the best you can. Get what's on the spatula cleaned off. So now we got that far. Now what you're going to do is you're going to take your cloth. Any kind of cloth, just a clean kitchen towel. Put it over the top. Take a rubber band. Put it around the cloth. Doesn't have to be tight, just needs to be on there. You basically just keep them bugs out. And then just let it sit on your counter. So on top. day two, you do the exact same thing you did on day one. So here's our day one mixture with the cloth on it. So we're gonna open this up, take the rubber band off. Take the cloth off. We are going to add four more ounces of flour and four more ounces of water to this. So I've got my measuring container on here. Go ahead and turn it on so that way it zeroes with the weight of the container. Now that it's zeroed with the weight of the container, I add four ounces or yeah, four ounces of flour. It can be any flour. You can use a different flour than you used the first time. All right, so there's four ounces. I'm gonna add that to the jar. Next, I'm gonna add four ounces of water. 4.0. Add it to our container. 
again. Now we've got that added, we're going to mix it. Still using the same spatula from the last time. Once you have that done, make sure you get the sides as down as possible. Just push it down. Next, we're going to cover it back up. Put this back on. And again, we're going to put it somewhere, you know, Somewhere just where it's not in direct sunlight, but you know, it's got to be relatively warm, kind of out of the way. A lot of people say put it on top of a refrigerator. I actually put it on top of one of my kitchen cabinets. It's a little bit warmer up there than on top of the refrigerator. So this is day two. You basically have done the exact same thing you did for day one. So we'll come back on day three tomorrow. All right, so this is the fifth day, and you can see there's been a change in our jar. What is the change? Well, you'll notice that there is a lot of bubbles now in the mix. Can you see it there? A lot of air pockets. You will see that the top has expanded. That's actually why we use the rubber band in the cloth. So the top has expanded. Go ahead and take this off so you can see it. See there? Now at this point your yeast is ready to use. Matter of fact, if I let that off there, it'll actually continue to bubble. lay this on here usually what I do at this point is I take and mash it down that'll get rid of some of the air pockets that are in it probably will also cause some of it to ooze out just like yesterday when we mashed it down and it was like you're basically popping the air that's inside of it and it'll settle down because of that some can you hear it popping you can see that it's actually going down on the inside too it's not sticking up out or right at the edge so at this point you technically you have your yeast now how do you use this it'll have a uh, kind of a soured smell you can taste it uh, I can't probably get my face down there my mug down there taste it mmm man that's good so uh Here's how you use it. I use a one to three ratio. So as an example, let's say that your bread takes three cups of flour. You're going to make the bread with your three cups of flour, but you're also going to use one cup of this yeast. You're basically just going to take one cup out, put it in with your normal bread recipe instead of using yeast. If it takes four cups, you're going to use one and a third cups of this mixture instead of the yeast. But everything else is going to stay the same. So the flour stays the same, your salt, butter, whatever else is in your bread, all stays the same. A one to three ratio. So, you know, if it's, you just have to figure out what the one to three ratio is. Um, but everything, you make it all the same. So, the way it is right now, you put the cloth back on it, put the rubber band back on it. If you stick it in the refrigerator the way it is now, this will stay good like this for a week. Now, if you're not going to use it within a week, 
you need to take some of it out. I don't know if you can actually see it's still bubbling. Um, you take some of it out and then you do the same thing that you did before. The four ounces of flour, four ounces of water. Mix it up. The flour and water is what feeds it, keeps it active. Um, so if you stick it in the refrigerator, that slows down the growing part of it. And then if you don't use part of it within a week, you have to remove some and add more flour and water to keep it fed. Um, you can keep it stored outside. As, if it's stored outside the refrigerator, it's just going to keep growing and getting stronger and stronger. Um, you know, the, I don't really have anything else to add to it. I've showed you how to make it. I've told you how to use it. If you got questions in the comments, just go ahead and ask. And uh, there's another way that you can make this too that's done the exact same way that's called natural yeast. So this is technically called, called sourdough starter. There's another one called natural yeast where you do the exact same thing, but instead of being inside your house on top of your refrigerator, you keep the jar outside. Like now you're collecting all of the yeast that's in the air naturally. Um, and you do it for a lot longer. So instead of doing it for five days, I think you actually do it for 10 or 15 days. And every, every five days you actually remove some of it and throw it away. But after 15 days, you've got a natural yeast. And uh, I like this though. It serves my purpose. It makes an amazingly tasting bread. Just try it out. You, you will not regret it.